Hello everybody, I am Keaton of Kinetic Catholic Ministries, back with another video. I hope that you all are having an absolutely wonderful day so far. Um, I know that I am know that you are in my prayers as we get kind of into the midst of the fall. I ask that you pray for me as soon as uh, I will be leaving for uh, Franciscan University of Steubenville attending college there. Um, and there's a lot of newness to that, so I ask that you keep me in your prayers um, for that as well. Guys, what I want to talk about today is address a question that I think there's a little bit of confusion on um, within the Catholic Church, and that is, do Catholics believe in ghosts? And beyond that, can Catholics believe in ghosts, right? So I think it's important that we understand what we mean by the term ghost, because ghosts in our secular world is thought of as like supernatural beings who come down and like open shelves and stuff, right? And like, and that and that's a specific type of of ghost. And so um, the Catholic Church walks a fine line, right? Because we understand that spirits do exist. We understand that we have a soul that is separate from our physical body. In fact, because of this, the Catholic Church does not have a defined um, uh, uh, document or, or dogma on the idea of ghosts. In fact, ghost existence, theologians even disagreed with each other, right? St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas, two of the greatest theologians, um, St. Thomas Aquinas disagreed with St. Augustine on, on the existence of ghosts. And so there's a lot of back and forth, but there's a couple of things we need to understand when we are addressing this, right? Spirits do exist. They do, right? Our soul leaves our body. Our soul and our body are different from one another. God can and has permitted said spirits to come back to earth at certain points, right? And we have visions of saints. We have um, all, all these different stories throughout church history of souls in heaven coming here, right? Of, of souls in heaven uh, giving us a vision. Even Mary, all the, all, all the Marian appearances, all of these things are spirits. And so by definition, a ghost, right? I think that there's also the fine line between like the paranormal ghost stories that our secular world has. I think the number one, we have to be careful because 12 year old me was just fallen for every like ghost story, cabinet moving video online when so many things can be fake now, like they can. Um, and so there's this fine line between understanding that there's a cultish kind of side to um, ghosts and there, there's a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Which kind of sorcery side to ghosts that the Catholic church rejects, right? This idea of Ouija boards is completely rejected by the Catholic Church. Um, Ouija boards are not a, a thing for we as Catholics to do. That's wrong, right? Um, the reality of spirits existing, that, that's just a truth, right? And, and so there is that fine line. I think that it is wrong to consider any single like ghost story or paranormal anything uh, demonic. I think it's also wrong to say that none of them are, right? Um, we also know about the existence of demons, which can be a little scary, and we don't like to talk about it a lot, but it's something that needs to be talked about um, because the evil one is constantly trying to lead us away from God, right? Evil does exist, whether we like it or not. And so demons de definitely exist. And that's where I talked a couple weeks ago about exorcism, right? Um, and, and what goes into an exorcism of the Catholic Church. We believe that people can be possessed, right? Uh, that demons often come in, in physical forms through possession or through animals, right? And so... Absolutely, that does exist, and that's what a lot of people associate with ghosts, but the issue is that we have this, like, paranormal, Halloween, sheet-over-your-head side of ghosts, and then we have gen genuine spirits, right? And then saints who are in heaven coming down, and, and all of that thing, and, and they get conflated together when we really, really, really need to keep them separate, because one of them is truth, right? One of them is truth, and so uh, secular society has kind of twisted that. Listen, I don't think there's anything wrong with, like, dressing up as a ghost for Halloween. That's not what I'm saying. Like, I think that's fine. Uh, I really like uh, ghost movies are fine. Like, Casper's great, right? Big fan of that movie. I'm not a horror movie fan, personally, so I can't get into it. But if you're into it, good for you. Um, like, I'm not saying any of that, right? Like, like obviously, for the entertainment um, and, the, and the idea of it, that's totally okay. When it comes to the question of if Catholics can and do believe it, it's not just a simple yes or no, because there are some cl clarifications that need to be made, because it's not just this umbrella term of ghosts, covers all spirits, covers all everything. There is uh, a difference, right? And there is a difference between myths and what we know to be not true and what we know to be evil. Um, and, and there is a difference between like the appearances of the saints, right? And, and spirits from heaven and, and, and um, those very distinct 
differences. I think that it's important that with seemingly like little questions like these, we as Catholics are able to know about them. We as Catholics are able to defend them because ultimately people are going to have questions about our faith. And this is a little side tangent, but, but, I, but I like um, to give it in these types of videos because sometimes um, we can be talking about this or something as seemingly superficial as ghosts. And it's like, well, what's the point, right? Like, what does it matter? Why, why are we discussing this? And it's, well, people have questions, right? People have questions about the Catholic Church and there's nothing wrong with having questions. Having questions is completely, totally normal. Um, and sometimes we ourselves may have those questions. And if we go out into a world that isn't Catholic, we are going to get asked those questions, right? We should live in such a way that anybody who knows us knows that we are Catholic. Doesn't mean we have to give a homily everywhere, but knows that we are Catholic, right? And so because of that, we, ha we have to be able to defend our faith, to, to answer certain questions. If we don't know the answer to a question, there's nothing wrong with saying that, right? Verbally saying that. Um, and so it, it comes down to the same thing with ghosts. And so just because that there isn't maybe like a dogma that you'll find or a place in canon law from an ecumenical council, like all that jazz, um, which I really like saying all that jazz, by the way, that's like my new phrase. Um, anyway, it doesn't mean that the church um, doesn't know anything about it. doesn't mean that the church just kind of sets it aside completely, right? We also acknowledge that God is omnipotent and omniscient. That means all powerful and all knowing. So he can do things and know things that we can't even grasp with our mind, right? We can't even begin to grasp. And so when answering that question, do Catholics believe in ghosts? Yes. We got to be careful though with, with what we mean by ghosts and then how we use that term um, as a whole. So before we get into the saying of the week, guys, I'm not just a YouTuber. I'm also a Catholic speaker. So if you want to book me to come and speak, or church school, men's group, women's group, youth group, you name it. I travel all around. I, I go and give talks. So please uh, do reach out to us at kineticcatholic.com. Click the contact us page. We'll work out something from there or reach out to us via email at kineticcatholicministries at gmail.com just directly. That's kineticcatholicministries at gmail.com. And guys, now that the topic is done, do y'all know what it is time for now? It's time for... The Saint of the Week! And today's Saint of the Week is Saint Rose of Lima. And I'll be honest with you guys, Whenever I film, and I think those of you who have seen my videos know this, like I like to uh, tie the same of the week into the topic in some capacity. Um, this one isn't really in a way, but the reason that I wanted to talk about her is because I just think that she has a really, really cool story that gets looked, kind of looked over a lot um, because it's simple. And we hear about all these saints that do all these incredible things and are martyred and all this jazz. And all of it is great. All of it is fantastic. But it's also like good to hear a saint who just lived a really, really simple life and then be able to apply their life to us. And so her feast day is coming up in just a couple days um, on August 23rd, which is pretty exciting. She grew up with a devout love for Christ. Um, and it was said that she was very, very beautiful. And so she was afraid that her beauty would maybe attract too many other men or it would kind of ruin her relationship with God. And so she would put like pepper all over her face to create like blotches and like bad lookingness. Which is just crazy that you can be that devout in your faith, right? You have to be like giving up of yourself. I don't know about you guys. I care how, about how I look a lot, right? And so to be able to have that like humility is crazy. It's so, so crazy. Um, she wore like, like a silver thing on her head that the inside was prickly. It was kind of like a crown of thorns as penance because her parents were super, super against her joining uh, a convent. She did not. Um, and when her parents tried to kind of push her toward marriage, uh, she declined. But because of obedience out of her parents, she lived a simple life at home um, and constantly cared for the sick, uh, constantly cared for the homeless. In fact, her reputation was so kind of wide about her just genuine selflessness and her charity work because she did a ton of charity work. And we think about charity work now, like boxing food into like, no, like, like charity, charity work of St. Rose of Lima, that her funeral was widely popular, ridiculously popular. And uh, a prominent person in her town took a turn um, carrying her casket, which is crazy. And because she was canonized fairly early on, she is considered to be the first canonized saint of the Americas, which is pretty neat. That's a pretty exciting title to have. And so just her simplistic lifestyle um, and her ability to, to give up of herself so greatly is why I wanted to talk about her for this week. I think that when the fall comes, we get wrapped up in our lives a lot. We get lost in the busyness 
And we lose the simplicity of our prayer life. We lose the simplicity of our relationship with God that we so generously have, that he so gener generously offers to us. And so I think as times get busier and busier, St. Rose of Lima is a great saint to, to look to, to, to ask, to pray for us, because we are able to, to kind of be calm, take a step back, understand that at the end of the day, what God wants is us, and, and he wants our prayers, and he wants our love, both through our faith and works, right? And St. Rose of Lima absolutely exemplifies that to, to the highest degree. St. Rose of Lima, pray for us. Once again, I ask that you guys uh, pray for me as I head off to college here pretty soon. Um, and if you have any prayer intentions, please leave those in the comments down below. Once again, I'm a Catholic speaker. I told you about how to contact me earlier in the video, but you can reach out to kineticcatholicministries at gmail.com um, to contact. Please go check out the website in general, kineticcatholic.com. So many awesome things you can do on there. Contact me, read about me. All the videos are up there, so please do go check that out. And your very own kinetic shop, which is pretty neat. Um, I hope that you all are really, really setting into this fall kind of um, style of getting going. And once again, I know that I said this, but I'm going to repeat this. Any prayer intentions, please, please, please leave them in the comments down below. The internet can be a great thing for us to be kind of be a community in that sense um, and pray for one another. Um, please click the red subscribe button down below and the button next to it. That way you get notified when I come out with a new video. Please like the video, comment any saint or topic suggestions that you might have for future videos. Share this channel and video with your friends and family if they don't know about Kinetic already. Once again, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you are having an absolutely wonderful day. This was Keaton of Kinetic Catholic Ministries. I'll see you all next week. And hi, Brielle.